Manila is the shared file system service for OpenStack. This is the second time that I've spoken with Tom Barron, who is the PTL, the project technical lead for Manila. The first time was in Denver. This is the Queens update, and looking forward to what's going to come in Rocky. Let's start with, with introductions. Of course, I, I spoke with you at the last PTG, so we're kind of updating on the status there. But if you'll uh, tell us who you are and what, what project you work on. Sure. Um, my name is Tom Barron. and at the last PTG, when we just talked, I had really just started working with the Manila project, having been working on Sender for quite a few uh, cycles before that. Um, and come here is the new PTL for Manila, which is an exciting and um, perhaps daunting uh, responsibility at the same time. But it's a good time to do it. Um, Manila is the um, file shares as a service project. So it's analogous, for instance, to Sender, but it's using shared file systems instead of um, raw block devices. We're at a good time uh, in, the, in the project which I can tell you about in a moment. Well, sure. So uh, today is the, the uh, Queen's release, right? So yes. officially. <laughs> yes, yes. Tell and us what you got done during this cycle. Yeah, so in, in this cycle, um, a lot of it was a hardening and productioning, uh, making more production ready of, the, of Manila. There were a couple of extra features, some tightening up of uh, share type quotas, um, th things that are maybe not the best, biggest sexy features, but it, it makes Manila much more production ready. Um, and that's really the news on Manila. And is, uh, the, um, we're kind of at an inflection point, I think, in terms of seeing deployments. Manila is a, um, a younger project. Than the, than the core projects like Nova and Sender and Neutron. Uh, but we, we've, we're seeing a lot of customer interest and, and queries from, from people about how to deploy it at scale. And that, that's really kind of the news, I think. Um, from a particular, as, apart from being, um, you know, kind of speaking for the project as a whole, from a, I'm also a stakeholder in it, and that um, I, I work on the CEP back end. And we just have a huge amount of interest and um, CEPFS and its, its deployment using open source in the end in Manila. And um, we really haven't been able to do that um, in a production way until Queens. I guess from a customer perspective, boring is good when it comes to your, your files and your data. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so that was. Um, now, I don't want to give you the idea that there's not uh, innovation or room for innovation in Manila. In fact, quite the contrary. We had um, uh, yesterday. We had twice as many people in the room as we expected. We had to ask for more chairs, Great. Uh, and the people coming in uh, who were unexpected were from other projects who were interested in interacting with Manila or helping us. Um, some of the other people. Who, one both ways. We had some people coming in from Nova showing us how to redo our quota system that we got from them um, so that it'll work better now because they scuttled their old quota system and, and um, uh, so uh, that we had gotten. Uh, so we got, we got a lot of help, but we also had people, surprise people, and, uh, without naming the company, uh, somebody is working with, uh, with Telcos um, and deploying uh, um, Two, two big clouds right now um, with um, about 50 compute nodes each and they're scaling them up to about 100 and they want to use Manila and figure out how to use it with the CEP back in. Uh, we have um, people from Huawei running a public cloud where they're doing um, thousands of shares uh, and they were talking to us about how they can use some of uh, features in their back end and make it shine and, and show them off. So, you know, I'm, I'm here from an open source perspective uh, in terms of back ends, and I want to have a uh, production quality, robust open source back end, in this case, CEP based, so that people can use it. Uh, they're using it for block storage already. Uh, many of them are using it for object storage already with a, a Swift compatible front end, um, and they want to be able to use it for file share storage as well. Uh, but at the same time, we want to have a project that welcomes anybody and that allows, um, allows somebody who has a good idea about to, to come in and use it and use an abstraction 
that uh, works across multiple backends, but at the same time allows you to show off your special sauce. Um, so, so it's kind of a uh, a playing field, a level playing field where people can innovate and and uh, customers can win as a result. And vendors can make a lot of money. <laughs> So speaking of your, your meetings yesterday, that leads us to the next question, which is, of course, what's coming next? Uh, what is, what's planned for Rocky, and uh, what can we expect to see in six months? Yeah, so um, in, in Rocky, there, there are several things we're looking at. We have meetings on Friday as well, so this is work in progress. Um, but, but the things we see um, happening, uh, first of all, there's a lot of interest in using Manila for more than just Nova workloads. So we were targeted initially at, at you know user VMs running in Nova, um, and we're still doing that. That's the main main focus. But we also need, have a lot people have a lot of interest in container-based workloads, of course. So we're going to be working on that. Um, in many cases, in some cases, that means working with Magnum, uh, which is the OpenStack uh, containers as a service project. Um, but it, of course, means working with other clouds side by side as well. So, for instance, Kubernetes clouds uh, with containers, so that means we're going to be interacting with Courier so that we can do networking uh, side by side with, with uh, Kubernetes. Um, so we're going, to, we're going to be at least laying the groundwork for that. We're going to see at least prototypes of that kind of work in, in the next cycle. Um, we had proposals from uh, Huawei on, on, on special stuff that their file servers can do, and we have it, we're, so we're figuring out how to expose those and still keep a, a, a nice common abstraction uh, that, that enables you to work interoperate between clouds without compromising that. Um, I mentioned that we're looking at redoing our quota system, which is more of an internal thing and more, you know, but, it, but it, you win from it because there are a lot of um, um, there are a lot of bugs with the deployments in Nova and Sender and Manila that, that need to be cleaned up in, in that way. So those things are things that come to mind at the moment, Rich. Um, but um, we'll probably have more on Friday. Um, stay tuned. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be coming out with more stuff. So from the community side, um, moving into the PTL role, what kind of changes do you see in your I know it's just started, but in your daily routine, no, it, and your responsibility. It, it's a good question, and it's um, the the previous PTL was with the project from the beginning, so I had to decide, uh, you know, can I fit into his big shoes? And uh, the answer is clearly no. Um, so what we're and we've talked about this quite explicitly that if I was going to pick up that job and, and help out, we're going to need to uh, delegate more, get more involvement by other people. So I see myself, my role is, um, um, you know, I'm still a technical player as an individual, but as PTL, it's much more um, helping communicate with people about what Manila is, helping other people participate, and um, actually helping get the word out that um, it's really a happening project. Uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's there for OpenStack, it's there for interacting outside OpenStack at the same time. Um, and we have a lot of room for, for innovation and stuff. So I'm, I'm kind of a promoter in a way for, for what, we're, what we're doing and how, how, it's, uh, how it's really a good place to be and work. Yeah, it's interesting to me how some PTLs are just technical leads and some are community managers, but most are some you know, mixture of the two. Well, and in Manila, it would be a mistake for any one person to walk into that room with the other people and think they're the smartest person in the world. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of, of um, cool, smart people with great ideas, and um, you know, there, there are synergies there, and, and stepping back and letting them do their stuff is, I think, the way to work. All right, well, thank you, Tom, and I look forward to catching up with you in six months and seeing where we've come from here. Yeah. Thanks, Rich. I appreciate the opportunity.